This whole section is all about sampling, taking small chunks out of a larger population. So we'll see what a population is, how to take a sample out of it, and then what parameters and statistics have to do with all of that. A population is the entirety of any group that you're interested in. Typically, we might think of the population referring to, let's say, the United States, all of the people in the United States. Uh, but you could also say, uh, my population of interest is female students at this particular high school. And that could be your population. Another thing about population, we usually think of it as the number of people. So what's the population of the town of Byron? Or what is the population of uh, St. Paul, Minnesota? Uh, we don't, we're not as worried always about the number of people, but the population is just identifying the specific group. A sample is a portion of that. So whenever we're taking a sample out, we're taking only a few members of the population. So instead of asking all Americans or all female students at this particular high school, we are only going to ask some of them to answer our questions. Sometimes with sampling, we don't always take an entire group together uh, of people, let's say, sitting next to each other, people that are similar. We try to spread it out. Um, so this diagram might be a better way of thinking of sampling as a bunch of uh, small chunks of the population taking as randomly as possible uh, to form a, a new smaller group. Looking at this uh, map of the United States, if our population was the United States, we would want to make sure that we had representation from all over. And sometimes uh, we might control for that. We might intentionally make sure that we get a few people from, let's say, every single state. Other times, we might just say we're going to randomly choose uh, 100 people from this entire population, and maybe it's possible all of them would come from Texas, but most likely they would come from uh, a range of different places. So there's different techniques depending on how much you care about getting a super diverse group, or if you have ways of breaking down the population, let's say, by state. At the end of the day, we want to know things about populations. Populations of interest are called populations of interest because that's what we want to know about. We don't necessarily want to know about a thousand Americans. We want to know about all Americans. We don't want to know about 10 students. We want to know about all students in whatever school or whatever state. Uh, the problem is, is that there's just too many of them, and it's going to take too long to talk to all of them. So that's why samples are actually just shortcuts. The thing is is that they are necessary because it is not often possible to talk to entire populations. Let's take this example. Let's say the population of interest is students on the robotics team at a specific school. So however many students are on the robotics team, that constitutes our entire population. The variable or the question we want to ask each person in that population is how many siblings do you have? So looking at these numbers, these are some uh, possible results we could have gotten if we asked uh, an entire team of, we have 12 numbers here, so there's a 12 person population. Uh, it looks like we have two siblings for one person, three for another, two for another, and so forth. With that data, we can figure out, with an entire census, the population. Now the term census, we usually think of that when we're measuring the, uh, when we're surveying the entire population of the United States. Every 10 years we have to do a census. However, a census is really just a way of saying, ask everybody. It doesn't have to mean the United States government asking everyone. It could be you asking the entire robotics team of 12 people. So we take a census. We ask all 12 people, and we can find some parameters. For example, the mean. The average number of siblings for students on the robotics team. We take all these numbers, add them up, divide it by 12. We get an average of 1.5. The standard deviation, punch these in your calculator, your calculator will tell you the standard deviation is 1.1. That's a measure of how spread apart these numbers are. The reason these are called parameters 
is because it tells you about the entire population. So P for parameter, P for population. You'll also notice the symbols. We use these Greek symbols when we're talking about parameters, and I'll show you a slide that kind of breaks some of that down a little bit later. Let's go to Make Believe Land for just a moment. Let's imagine we don't have access to all 12 of these. We don't know the true parameters, and we want to take a sample. Let's say we're only going to select, randomly choose four of these people on the team. It might look something like this. Let's say we talk to this person with three siblings, this one with two, this with zero, and this one with one. We take these four numbers only, because those are the only numbers we know about, and we can find the mean and standard deviation. In this case, our particular sample ends up with the mean being exactly the same as the population mean. Coincidence? Perhaps. It seems reasonable that if the true mean is 1.5, that our sample should be close to that. Uh, and standard deviation, 1.3 compared to 1.1. Little bit different, but generally on the right track. Uh, we'll change our symbols that we use, even though mean and mean, standard deviation and standard deviation, when we're talking about samples, which we call uh, these values statistics, they all start with S, we use these different symbols. We have S and we have X with a bar on top for the mean. But let's say we get a different sample. Because it's random, we could get any random four. And let's say we get these four now. We get a one, a zero, a one, and a zero. Well, you, the average of those four numbers is 0 0.5 and the standard deviation is 0 0.6. Now you're starting to get a little ways off from our population parameters, the actual values of the entire population, because we happen to sample a bunch of people with very few siblings. So you might get a very low number. And same thing on the other extreme. We might end up taking a sample that has a decent number of high values in it. Could it have been even higher? Yeah, we could have gotten some of these twos instead of the one and the zero in our sample and driven this up even farther, but even still, this 2.0 is above the 1.5 and our standard deviation here, the spread, is a little bit high, unusually high. The key thing to think about here is that when we're only taking samples, there's a good chance that we're going to make a mistake. We're going to mess it up. The actual answer is not always going to uh, come out for us. Let's take a different uh, type of question now. So we just dealt with a numerical question. How many uh, siblings do you have? We still have our same population, students on the robotics team. We're still, we're asking them a slightly different question. What is, are you the oldest sibling? And the 12 people responded either yes or no. Yes or no. So they said one of those two answers. And this is a, uh, when we're dealing with categorical variables, we often have two choices or maybe sometimes more. And what we have to do is calculate the fraction or proportion of people who answered in one particular way. In this case we're going to say the proportion of students who said yes. We have a yes, two, three, four, five, six, six yeses, so six out of twelve total would be 0.5. And that's why we have our p equals 0.5. That's from taking a census from asking everyone. Let's take a sample, just like we did before. Let's randomly choose four of those answers. We might get a yes, a yes, a no, and a no. Well, that proportion is 0 0.5. Two out of four, 0.5, just like we had with the whole population. So in this case, our sample worked out great. Take another sample. No, no, yes, no. Uh-oh. Now only 0.25 of our population, a quarter of our population uh, is answering yes, is the oldest sibling. So that is not the same as our entire population here. And then finally we take another, a third sample and we get yes, yes, no, yes, so 0.75. The point is is that they could all come out a little bit different. They're not all going to give you the exact same answer and they're not going to all give you the right answer. This right here is if we ask everyone. This is the correct answer. Taking a sample means that sometimes we're going to get it wrong. Just a little side note here, we'll talk about this in a sec. But uh, we use P for a population 
proportion, when we know everyone, we use P. And we use P with this little goofy hat on top, uh, this uh, little arrow pointing up to refer to a sample proportion when we don't have it exactly right. So the bar or the hat tends to be the symbol that tells you, hey, I'm a sample, not the whole population. So again, populations are really what we want. Samples are shortcuts. And the problem with samples is that it's easy to mess them up. They can be wrong. The good news is, is that there are ways to minimize how wrong they are or to at least know how wrong they are so we can state honestly what we found when we go out and do a survey. And we'll look at all those different techniques in a little bit. First, I told you I'd go back to the symbols that we used. So this might be something you just want to copy down in some notes. Uh, whenever you have quantitative variables, you're going to be calculating the mean and the standard deviation. If you know the entire population, or you're calculating the parameter, we use those Greek symbols, that mu or sigma, for the mean and standard deviation. If you're doing a sample, we call uh, the mean and standard deviation statistics when we have a sample, then you're going to get x with the bar on top, x bar, and s. And sometimes we put a little x down there uh, for reasons that we can get into later. Down here, uh, with categorical, whenever you have two options, such as yes, no, true, false, uh, questions like that, uh, and you're finding a proportion, what percent said true, what percent uh, said yes, like we did in that last example, our population value is p for the proportion, and our sample statistic for proportion is p hat.